Sony's mid-ranger for 2020, the Xperia 10 Mark II, comes with a triple lens setup. In this camera review video I will show you the strengths and weaknesses of this camera. Is Sony back for prime time or not? Let's find out. Design-wise, Sony's Xperia 10 Mark II tries to be high-end with a glass back-end and a camera bump reminiscent of the Xperia 5 or the new Xperia 1 Mark II. Sadly, under the hood we don't find the same camera sensors as on the Bigger Brothers. The main sensor is 12 megapixels with 26mm equivalent with face detection autofocus and an aperture of 2.0. Surrounded by two 8 megapixel camera sensors, the bottom one is a 2x telephoto with 52mm equivalent view, face detection autofocus and aperture of 2.4. The top camera is the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle with 16mm equivalent and aperture of 2.2. So far that does not sound too bad, but let's take a look at the size of the sensors on which all of those megapixels have to squeeze into. The main camera sensor size uh, 1 over 2.8 of an inch, the other twos are 1 over 4 inch sensors. This sounds familiar, basically it's the same setup as on the Xperia 10 Plus with just one ultra wide camera sensor added and the main sensor's aperture being a bit smaller. So you can expect the same kind of image quality as on the Xperia 10 Plus device. In daylight shots deliver good accurate colors and sharp images. Details are good as well. Also on the telecamera that delivers only slightly softer images with a bit less contrast most of the time. The ultrawide camera sensor comes without autofocus and shots tend to be noticeably softer than the other two cameras with loss of details when you zoom in. So far so good. That's what we would expect from a typical mid-range device, but it falls a bit apart when it comes to the camera software and its auto detection and recognition of scenes. I never was able to trigger it to use HDR to a point where I believe the simply does not have any HDR auto detection mode, which is a bummer as it can detect backlight situations. Sony just has to add an option to use HDR in those situations. With HDR enabled in the manual mode you can get fantastic shots even out of backlit situations. Despite the name manual mode, you can switch to this mode and keep everything in auto and just enable HDR for it, though manual mode does not offer you to switch between the lenses. The main camera allows for getting a bit of a macro mode going. It's not a real macro cam and as the ultra wide angle has no autofocus cannot be used for this. So the main cam is the best you can get. If the light is good you can get surprisingly good detailed shots. I would say this camera is better than most of the extra macro cameras included in some mid-range devices that offer a closer focus distance but also a lower resolution with less details. If you zoom into the 12 megapixel images together with the minimum focus distance you can get some amazing macro like shots with the main cam. Recording videos is good as well. You cannot expect miracles but the main lens works quite good. Stabilization is not class leading but okay. Colors look fine. Autofocus is spot on most of the time and the ultra wide angle is still a bit soft. You have no autofocus with the ultra wide angle and the two times zoom can also be good though stabilization struggles a bit more or less. The ultra wide angle lens cannot be used when recording 4K. Full HD 60 frames per second turns off the stabilization and smooth zooming is basically impossible with Sony's default camera app. 
Just like in photo mode, you need to take care of sunlight not hitting the sensor from the front, otherwise you will have issues with dynamic range. The sun flare can also happen and there seems to be no extra coding or software tricks to avoid sun flares. Shooting in the dark is still something mid-rangers struggle a bit and this is no exception even with the new Xperia 10 Mark II and its advertised night mode. To be totally honest, this is more like an average night mode Sony added here, if not to call it a gimmick. Clearly the algorithm seems to be the non-strong mode that Sony used already on the Xperia 1. But now it offered, offers it as a separate mode th that you can activate. In total darkness it is useless. The more light you have, the better it works, but it never turns a night into a day. Mostly I noticed improvements when it comes to harsh lantern lights and overblowing of those lights. In general the night mode is able to smooth out shadow areas and overblown areas to create a more uniform light balance. It is however nowhere close to Huawei's night mode or even the mid-range devices um, that Huawei ships and more comparable to the night mode that Samsung offers for their Galaxy A series of smartphones. Sony is fighting here with blunt weapons. The main sensor size is tiny already and the tele and ultra wide angle lens even smaller. Don't expect to capture good noise free shots with either of these cameras. The tele and ultra wide angle lenses are the worst in night mode. Don't use them except if you have a lot of light. Taking the shot takes the usual several seconds depending on how much light is available. Night video test with the front facing camera of the Xperia 10 Mark II. I've tried to find a light source here that is uh, shining on my face so you can see me otherwise it will be too blurry or too grainy. Uh, tried out the night shot mode which only works for uh, photos and uh, it is taking some kind of stacking algorithm because you have to really point to the subject or object that you want to photograph otherwise if you take it directly away in night mode it will become very blurry so it is using some kind of stacking algorithm for creating those uh, night mode pictures so in contrast to the earlier reports that I reported about that it is using not stacking it seems to be using some sort of stacking but it's not the same sort of stacking that other camera manufacturers use apparently now this is a recording with the sony app itself so bear in mind i don't have an external microphone attached to it and there might be a little bit of noise here because there's a street right behind me uh, let's take a look how the main camera sensor does so this is now the main camera of the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II, same position under the lamp here, under the light, and I hope it is not so grainy as the normal one. And how is the stabilization? I will move a bit here, because I think the, the normal selfie cam is not that good when it comes to stabilization, especially in the dark. I'm not sure how it will look like now uh, in the dark with the stabilization. Sony tends to have one of the best stabilizations in the last years but I think other manufacturers kept up with this and especially Samsung and Huawei are surpassing Sony when it comes to stabilization and uh, how's the stabilization in the nighttime just uh, post a comment down below what you think about this nighttime videography and vlogging uh, with the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II I'm using the volume buttons to start and stop recording as you saw, video samples are almost unusable. You need light, there is no software magic around it. Without light everything looks grainy and unusable for almost everything. Apparently not for this review here. <laughs> anyway, I expected a bit more from Sony here when it comes to the night mode.
The back cameras offer for some special features like a bokeh effect that utilizes the telesensor as a primary sensor for taking shots with a blurry background. That usually works quite well and can be used for objects, but works best with humans as portrait effect. Though you need to be careful again when it comes to backlit situations, you cannot enable HDR mode for this. Correcting slightly underexposed images in post-production, however, is possible. So you can only edit JPEG files here. Sony does not allow you to save raw files. Another special mode is the 120 frames per second slow motion mode. Good, but not great. Other mid-rangers offer a bit more frames per second. However, somehow I also experienced slight sluggish autofocus when using the slow motion. It likes to go in and out of focus quickly. Sony offers some creative effects as well. Nothing interesting here. The typical hue color, chooser, sepia, comic fish eye effect and so on. Let's take a look at the 8 megapixel front camera with an aperture of f2.0. Nothing special to see here, no autofocus. If you nail the distance, you get quite sharp photos with okayish colors. At night, you are able to use the night mode as well for this camera. But like the tele and uh, super wide angle cameras on the back, you need still a lot of light to create something really usable. It's better to use night mode in dark conditions, however, but you need a solid hand because you have to wait a few seconds before it takes the selfie. Portrait mode is also included and is mostly a gimmick, I would say. If you go above a quarter when it comes to opening up the virtual aperture value, it begins to fall apart and you can see clearly that Sony's algorithm cannot keep up with uh, cutting a nice bokeh with you in the foreground. Too many errors occur, so the fake bokeh effect is immediately visible and looks too artificial. The front-facing camera is something Sony is stagnating, as it seems. All in all, uh, Sony does not deliver something mind-blowing with the camera system of the Xperia 10 Mark II. It is a solid update to the Xperia 10 and a minor update to the Xperia 10 Plus where it basically just adds the super wide angle lens. The night mode is mostly a gimmick with limited improvements. You don't want to shoot pictures in the dark with this camera. You can still, but don't expect so stellar results. Where Sony's mid-range camera solution can maybe compete with Samsung and Co. The software is a big problem. Sony's auto mode is stagnating and has nothing to offer that improves the situation for point and shoot users. Granted, you get natural looking photos with good sharpness, but hiding HDR in the manual mode only is a mistake. Sony delivers a typical mid-range device camera performance but where other mid-range competitors like Xiaomi, Huawei and even Samsung improve, Sony seems to stagnate. Sony could still update the camera software to improve usability, but I fear we won't see any updates in that department. However, Sony delivers pretty consistent quality for all three lenses, something other manufacturers leave out in this price range. They might add some more camera sensors, but those are not really usable as the quality differs too much from the others or fail to convince completely. In that regard, Sony's camera solution is good, but could be better, even for this price range. <laughs>